Hi, we are Persephone and you are here in our home studio in the beautiful Andorra. Alright, so now we will show you the way we record the actual guitars that will go to the final uh, destination, to the, to the mixing process with the producer. And to do that, we will uh, use an uh, old song uh, from our last album called Spiritual Migration, songs called Great Reality. So here we have like the rough uh, drum recording and some bass. Uh, we used to do uh, all the drum recordings by ourselves as well in the bass, but uh, not here. So we will just show you the way we record guitars, how we set everything up, and we will just play a little bit uh, for you to know the way, the way we do. Uh, for this, uh, we use uh, actual cabinets and, amplifica and amplification, and we used to go with some DA as well to give the producer uh, both options, the, the real um, input of the guitar and the cabinet and all microphones and everything and uh, the clean signal as well for if w they want to reamp anything or go with other options. Um, so yeah, we use uh, two microphones, I guess. Yes, as we'll explain, uh, you can explain the, the guitar you use uh, and okay. all the stuff the, to follow the signal path. He doesn't want to talk anyway. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's my way to we'll see follow. All right. So yeah, yes. So, so we use the, the actual cabinet, the amplification, and, and we use uh, you know electric guitars uh, because we are a metal band. We used to go with some um, active pickups lately, you know, because um, we use a bunch of guitars on studio to get different sounds because we have some clean tones and some distorted sounds. But we are now about to record the distorted rhythmic guitar, the the, the big one, and and then we're using this this uh, kind of solid guitars and one piece. This is, uh, we actually play this brand called Mayon's Guitar, and you know it's made out of for, uh, of ebony because it's a really dark sound, and the, the pickups give some kind of compression as well. So when the signal goes into the computer, um, it actually sounds really, really, really tight. We go, we record straight, uh, straight to the guitar, to the to the guitar amp. So no. No pedals, no things. We want uh, raw sound, you know. We go from the guitar to the guitar head directly. And guess what? The most interesting thing after is where we're recording with the real mix and the cabinet. So follow me, please. So now we are into the toilet, as you see. Here was the magic happened with Persephone. So we record all the guitars with a cabinet into the toilet. So no problem because we put uh, some uh, acoustic treatment with, uh, with panels like this. So we are searching for a really dry sound. So actually, actually you see in the setup, uh, setup uh, you see two microphones. Uh, sometimes we use a third microphone. Uh, to get more depth, but usually it's a Sure 57 and a Royer. You you see, it's straight from one of the speakers. There is a, a cabinet with four speakers, so we use only one. The 57 is on axis, directly on axis, and the Royer is a little bit off axis, but we get. Uh, with the 77, we get really a raw sound in the middle, the middle frequency, and, and the Royer gets more in the top and low end, so we get more bass sound and more uh, air at the end. So we focus the, the 70, uh, 57, sorry, to the mid frequencies and the other microphone in the other spectrum. So you can see now. Uh, the positioning and after we put all the acoustic treatment so you can see what uh, sound we get with that okay so Carlos you can play a little riff please nice <laughs> very metal <laughs> uh, the great reality
So now here we are uh, from the toilet with the guitar cabinet to the mic preamp. Uh, actually, we use a Chandler Limited. It's amazing, an amazing uh, preamp, creamy, really gorgeous. Uh, this is a TG2 Abbey Road Special Edition. Uh, two channels, two mono channels. So the 57 goes to channel one, and the Royer R121 goes to channel two. And the the trick with this kind of preamp really is to uh, crank it up the, the the input now and then goes uh, down the output because this is what the magic happens you know and uh, this is the sound really the sound of the preamps uh, goes into into the, the game now as you see uh, uh, this a uh, little a uh, little uh, tweaks we have done pre before and there is also one of the channels is face engaged because we have checked it and one of the mix had a uh, out of face so we put here in in, in fact uh, we I, I i was a little bit lazy i don't want to move the microphone so <laughs> i put face and it works so that's okay after that the goes uh, to the converter to the analog digital converter and after that that goes into uh, directly into cubase audio interface and cubase we, we actually use cubase pro 8 8.5 the last version and that's all the pretty raw process of uh, signal path recording now we are from the converters now we are into cubase now Steinberg cubase pro 8.5 an amazing dough so now we are seeing here we are rooted the 57 and the royer into two mono channels to comes from the TG2 preamps and that will be nice to see how Carlos play a real performance with uh, the great reality from last Persephone album and I will show you uh, how each mic does to the final song because that will be really interesting to see what uh, every every mic uh, does and the blend of the two mics who do to the final sound or to get a really um, wide spectrum from the guitar actual guitar sound now we have a drum section record pre-record and the bass so we will take a look uh, where we where i w uh, will just record my guitar uh, over and it sounds something like this. There's no processing on this, so it's just uh, the drums and bass in a row. So this is it. Actually, we have the drums and the, and the, the bass, no any processing on it. So we will go raw with the click track and, and to, with the drums to get uh, some kind of uh, organic feeling when, when we record. And sounds something like this. Go. go. <laughs> Can I do it again? <laughs> so yeah, I, I just uh, tried my best on a song I record like three years ago and I've played plenty in last years and I, I failed. <laughs> right. That happens. So at this, at this moment, oh, at this part of the process, we used to take lots of takes and takes and takes trying to find the, the, the best performance possible. So yeah, when something like this happened, then Perry goes like, this is not too tight or this is too tight or I don't like this or do it again. And then sometimes you play it right and he goes, do it again, just in case. And After 1,500 yeah. takes. So <laughs> then we're tight and we just left the last one. So yeah, we'll do it again, hopefully better than the first time. Can you please? Yeah. Pick wreck again. Oh shit, again? That happens a lot as well. I'm sure it's not perfect, but yeah, it's just a little bit better. <laughs> so yeah, in this part, we used to record twice the same thing to get the stereo kind of idea. Sometimes when we, um, back then, we used to record like twice each 
guitar. But uh, lately we are just using one guitar in each part of the stereo because it's easier to get a really tight sound in this kind of music. But there's lots of notes involved. So if we want some harmonies in, uh, on, on them, we just play two different guitars. We, just, we, we, don't, go on, we don't go with uh, like two and two. We one and one and, and this is the way we go. So yeah, hopefully yeah. I will play the, the same thing. Good enough. Yeah. For a moment, sitting in the second mic. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. So now you will listen now to the previous performance. I will pan in hard left and the new one hard right. Okay. All right. To get a perfect synchronized performance of both guitars, rhythm, rhythm guitars. All right, go. go. <laughs> again? Yeah, I can do it again. Please. You want again? Right. Right, go. Go. Okay, please. <laughs> Same note. <laughs> you can, you can, yes, we'll check now this, the both performance with two mix each one, so four tracks. So now it gets the interesting thing, the uh, most interesting part is now is with uh, setting uh, or checking the, what does every, every microphone to the sound because uh, as I say before uh, the 57 gets a middle, uh, middle frequencies and Royer gets more into the low end and top, top end. So if you check now, we put only the one microphone for each performance, the 57. That's okay. I will check now the other microphone. So you, you can say this sound is quite moody, but uh, combined with the other one gets uh, really a full wide spectrum wise sound. So I will put again all four tracks, uh, two mix for each performance, left and right, and I will mute the Royer to see what happens with the sound. we can get a full sound when we put both microphones. Uh, important, both microphones have to be in phase, okay, the recordings. If not, you have a little problems, <laughs> a big issue when it goes to mixing process or mastering process. But you can get uh, with two microphones really a, a full sound of a rhythm guitar, a distorted rhythm guitar. That's all. Yeah, that. Okay, now uh, that Carlos is, uh, is done with the guitar recording, we are going to focus on the keyboard uh, recording uh, for 
practically everything we do with Persephone, we main, mainly focus on this keyboard, the Kronos. Uh, we use it for live perform uh, performances and also for recordings. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's really great uh, uh, because it, ha it has a wide range of sounds that you can actually use. Uh, it's, it's pretty light uh, weight, which is, uh, which is nice because when you are going out uh, and play, if you have to, for example, take a flight, uh, it can be a real problem because these, these guys, uh, the bigger ones, uh, and uh, weighing about 24 kilos, 25 kilos, it can be a problem to get it in the, in the flight. But this solution uh, for, for Persephone is perfect. And uh, also it has a, a very, very, very uh, nice um, configuration here um, that, um, I don't know how to say this, uh, the uh, feature in is uh, okay. This has a, a, a really interesting feature in this keyboard. Um, is the set list um, mode that allows you to put every sound you are going to use in every song right uh, one uh, one after the other, so that you with a, with a pedal you can change it while you're playing the song. You you don't have to bring two keyboards. You have everything set up, set up with uh, just one keyboard. It's very very comfortable. And uh, even you can use uh, complicated, complicated combinations with uh, several keyboards, uh, uh, several sounds at the same time. Uh, it's very, very comfortable. But for this, uh, uh, for this um, recording we are doing right now, we are going to use uh, tape coir, okay, to give, uh, give it some that kind of vintage sound, okay. And then we are going to switch to piano. Uh, Earlier in time, I used to record everything, every piano with uh, Ivory, the Ivory plugin. But lately, the core guys have done a really good job with the piano sound, and it's really, really, really amazing. And we are using it all over, all over the place. So uh, we're going to start over with uh, with the uh, the tape core. Okay, <coughs> if you want to listen to the, the sound that we have here. Okay. okay, most of the time, uh, in order to to uh, avoid timing, uh, timing, uh, time wasting, uh, we try to record everything with MIDI so that if we missed just a note in a, in a good uh, interpretation, it's it's okay with uh, uh, that. We can tweak it and make it sound perfect. Okay, so we are going now to the to the piano sound. Second part. Now. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Uh, listen to that. <coughs> oh, you want another take? No, I That's think okay. it's pretty much okay. That's pretty much it. So now we are into recording vocals with uh, Mo, one of the cleanest uh, vocalists of Persephone. And uh, from this chain, we use uh, actually, sorry, Mo, as well, uh, we use an Avalon preamp. This is a mono channel strip. So, but I don't use uh, all the EQ and filters. Uh, I, I don't use that. So, and nor compression. This is also a compressor. 
I only use the preamp itself. Like I, I explained it uh, before with the guitar preamp, I crank uh, quite a bit <laughs> the input and the output goes down. down. Okay, uh, this preamp uh, gets the signal from uh, Neumann, Neumann U87, so it's a classic vocal mic, and that's all. Sometimes we use a second mic, put it in phase also, I like the two mics of the guitars, but this time we don't use that. Uh, and the last thing, uh, normally this is a little corner, so we close up with some acoustic uh, panels here. We put like the, the same panels like the guitar cabinet now, but now for convenience uh, reasons we don't, we want to see more what the, he does. Okay, the signal goes from the mic, and the Neumann, the Avalon goes also to the analog converter, analog digital converter, and goes straight into Cubase Pro. Okay, and that is this quite simple signal. But okay, I go there. Now we are into Cubase uh, recording. It's very important the vocal track we have to put in pink color because now it's diva mode and we have to get the most of it. <laughs> so now we are recording vocals and that's it. Mo, Let's we go. go. Ready? Yeah. We go. Unconsciously, it's influence our own lives. Creates on us a false being Denying the beauty, the innate brightness Turn it off our deepest evolution That's pretty nice I think I can improve You can improve can that? Like 50 times more You can improve yeah. that <laughs> You can Normally, with this sound, we get also, um, with the acoustic treatment, we get a uh, quite uh, dry sound. We want to get the mixer, uh, all the possibilities to get uh, delays, reverbs, dry sound, and quite controlled sound, okay? We go, again. Yeah, Unconsciously, it influences along the lives. Creates an also false being Denying the beauty, the innate brightness Turn it off our deepest evolution A nice clipping now, but we have to check the preamp, the output, so we it's a it's a go and back process now, so but that's okay for the for the demo we want to show. We want to check that with the whole sound. Sorry for the fans. <laughs> Sorry for that. I think there is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the voice now obviously needs some treatment, so after that you need to put some compressor, some delays to get that is quite dry. So there's, a big, uh, there's a big dynamic range uh, yeah. happening here that might, might be uh, compressed. Controlled. Yeah, controlled. Yes, now it's yeah. quite boring, <laughs> you know, it's quite dry, no? Uh, but you need uh, a lot of processing. The, the voice actually it's quite difficult to get a good mix because uh, you need a lot of uh, EQ, compressing, uh, delays to get depth. Uh, it depends on the on every every part of the song. Sometimes we also um, add some chords in the, in the background, some uh, second voices. <coughs> I uh, I don't think we are going to do this because uh, in this album. Uh, it was the drummer making the, the second voice, he's a, he's a tenor, he has a higher pitch than mine and uh, he was doing some falsetto, uh, falsetto voices that worked work really well here. I, don't, I won't do it right now because uh, I don't think I can achieve a good sound uh, for that uh, note but it always helps a lot the, the, the processing of all the voices, the, the depth and the interest, give, uh, gives it some interest actually. <laughs> Okay guys, this is uh, all for now. I hope you guys join us in the second part of the video.